everybody. Um, Chris Blackstone. Um, run the Blue Planet DevOps Exchange. Uh, so that's mainly the, the DevOps Exchange website, uh, developer.blueplanet.com, and uh, as well as some of the help maintain the communities on the MySiena uh, portal. So uh, the agenda for the 2002 Ask the Expert here is uh, kind of do a quick review of the DevOps exchange and communities, uh, some of the things that may have changed um, recently, and then we'll get into the uh, updates to the DevOps Toolkit and Blue Planet Evaluation Editions, um, as well as the DTK DIST package updates. So those would be things like RISDK, uh, BBProv, um, and then we'll get into a demo on unit testing resource adapters. Um, this is something that's come up more recently. It's been around for a while, but we just want to make sure everybody's uh, aware of the capabilities and how to do that. And I don't think we have anything on the exchange yet, um, kind of demoing it. So we'll go through that process if anybody hasn't seen it before. Um, and then finally open this up to Q and A with the Blue Planet Solutions and engineering teams for any questions you may have. Um, so I guess we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, so with regards to the DevOps Exchange and uh, community updates, um, I guess I can come here and uh, sign in. Uh, as everybody knows, the sign in is now through the MySiena portal. So when you uh, link here, it'll bring you over to the SSO. Um, and of course, uh, customers can just log in directly with their email and address and password and uh, Sienna users will be redirected to Okta and then uh, finally push through. Um, so really the um, kind of biggest change we have here right now is uh, we've kind of keep adding more and more documentations from uh, the developer point of view. So uh, now you can get a link to the latest publications uh, more quickly and then uh, we just keep adding a little bit of kind of all these different dev docs um, and really the most recent one would be the NFBO developer docs. These are now available um, as well. And of course, you can still get to all the publications. Um, we have a link to get you quickly to the latest 2002 release. Um, but of course, you can go backwards to any of them, 1910 all the way back to, to 1806. And these would be all the PDF publications uh, that would come out of our documentation team. Um, over to the, the dev tools. Um, so of course, the 2002 release is out. Um, if you haven't downloaded it yet, uh, feel free to reach out to devexchange at sienna.com or devexchange at blueplanet.com um, to request uh, those passwords and we can get you set up. Um, one of the things that has been updated recently is uh, the release notes. Um, so you can now come into the DevOps toolkit and uh, more easily see what this uh, current version includes as far as you know, the DDK disk version, um, BBO core dev, Frost Orchestrate UI dev. Um, and then within that DTK disk version, we break down the actual packages as well. Um, now for the change log for each of these packages, uh, you would jump over to the DTK disk docs here um, and you can then drill in to say um, DTK invoke and pick the version and, and see the uh, change log specific to that release here. Um, also worth noting, um, there's been updates to the license agreements. Um, I think we mentioned this in the 1910 release as well, but if you haven't um, seen them yet, uh, you can follow this link um, to find all the Blue Planet uh, contractual documents. So that includes uh, the DevOps software evaluation license, um, the DevOps exchange and user license agreement. I believe there's one for the Blue Planet evaluation edition here as well. Um, and of course, uh, just to review kind of the, the access levels, um, I think back with the 1910 or a little bit before, you know, we've opened up the community forum uh, as read only to anybody. So the community forum, of course, is if you come to the MySiena portal here um, and then under QA, Blue Planet. So yeah, as I mentioned, um, yeah, these 
forum has been opened, uh, you know, read only to everybody. So, um, you know, as you need to search for Blue Planet issues, uh, you know, anybody should be able to come in and see this without having to go through the, the hassle of logging in. If your question uh, hasn't been answered yet or, or doesn't exist, then of course you'll need to create a crowd to post new questions, but um, trying to make it more accessible to find the uh, resources you need. Okay, so um, yeah, as mentioned with the, the DevOps toolkit and BP eval additions, um, really no significant changes to how those work. Um, again, you know, the DTK dist has just been upgraded to include all those latest cat packages. We will talk about a few of the um, major or notable changes from uh, the latest DTK dist packages. Um, and with grudge to the Blue Planet eval edition, um, it's just containing the latest GA solution lineup for uh, MDSO and NFEO. Um, and of course, we also have a, a light orchestrate only version now. Um, often we kind of get questions on, you know, the different use cases between the DevOps toolkit and the evaluation edition. Um, and so I'd say the DevOps toolkit is really meant for building um, microservices such as resource adapters or service templates or really any other microservice that would actually extend the Blue Planet MDSO platform itself. Um, Whereas the Blue Planet eval edition is more useful for doing a demo or a trial of Blue Planet MDSO or NFEO. And it can be used for um, development, uh, particularly if you're trying to interface with the Blue Planet API um, from a northbound system such as a OSS BSS system. Um, okay, so now to talk about some of the specific DTK disk package updates. Um, so yeah, the current DevOps toolkit uh, 2002.1-2 is our GA release right now. It includes the DTK disk release uh, 2002.1-3. Um, of course, the easiest way to, to see this is probably just to do an LS in whichever your current toolkit is, and, and you'll see that uh, right there at the home directory. So if I list my home directory here, I can see I have the DTK disk 2002.1.3. Um, and of course, these, uh, the DTK dist itself does often update uh, more frequently than the entire DevOps toolkit. And if you're ever interested in getting the latest release there, um, you can go find that within the uh, GitLab instance, uh, git.blueplanet.com, um, and just search for the DTK dist project. Um, so within here, we have the releases. And you can download the, the tar file that would just be in, unzipped and um, there's a simple install script included uh, to update your DevOps toolkit environment to whichever specific release of DTK disk you need. Okay, so some of the notable changes um, is the REST API now also provides a connection validation endpoint. Um, so this is in addition to the short-lived connections from 1910, uh, since those connections uh, don't stay active. Um, if you're building different service templates uh, on top of a resource adapter um, and calling into directly to the RA's API. Uh, it would be useful to validate that that endpoint is up and active um, before you make any requests southbound. Um, in addition, the custom endpoints API has been um, improved and simplified, so it's easier to create your own custom endpoints if uh, you're trying to develop against something that we don't have out of the box. Um, and so we can take a look at what those are. Those are under RSDK, um, of course, the latest release, and then this custom endpoints file. So RSDK 410, and then you can come to this drop down and uh, find the documentation for the custom endpoints. Um, but as I mentioned, you know, these have been updated to try and make it simpler to extend and, and create your own endpoints. Um, in addition to that, there's been several improvements to the RA's integration with the GCS, which is kind of um, the centralized settings for uh, Blue Planet instance. Um, there's also been improvements to the Yang RA tools, so it's the Yang Gen RA and Yang Prepare CLI uh, tools. Um, and, and lastly, uh, modifications to the BP Prov's state history limit, um, as well as I think some other things resulted in some significant memory improvements. So if you were 
creating or using device RAs, um, you should see a great reduction in the memory requirements from those RAs on the MDSO system. So in our testing with a three host cluster, uh, they provisioned uh, over 84,000 devices uh, for a total of more than 22 million resources. And uh, with these changes, they saw a reduction from about 25 gigabytes of memory uh, used by the RAs down to only three gigabytes of memory. So that's uh, pretty huge. Um, I guess before I move on to the demo with unit testing, I just want to maybe give uh, anybody a chance uh, if they have any questions with regards to the uh, DTK disk package updates. Um, and maybe a reach out in the chat or um, I think you may be able to raise your hand and, and I can give you a chance to speak that way as well. I do know, um, so uh, Janet Quarters uh, from our uh, support team has asked, uh, you know, is there a good way to see which DTK disk version is compatible with which version of Blue Planet? Um, I think in general, uh, you know, we include the, the release of the um, Blue Planet as a prefix to the DTK disk uh, release. So if you are on DTK disk 2002, um, then you'll know those are also compatible. And I think uh, Ryan and uh, Shimming do a, a good job of also making sure that there's uh, continued backwards compatibility as they move forward to. Um, and then we're also asked uh, if we have any more details on some of the GCS changes. I don't know, um, Ryan, if you can speak to any of that. One thing what was that we extended the support for the RASDK plugins, um, which didn't really have too much uh, to do. I don't think a lot of people write plugins. It does, uh, but it does allow um, that that did allow support for settings from RPSDK to be published to GCS. Uh, so there's settings in RPSDK in there, um, and I believe. Double check the change log real quick. Oh, uh, maybe that was 1910. I'm not actually sure. Yeah, I'm not actually sure what we all put in there. There's been too much. Like, I mean, it's been six months since I worked on that 2002 stuff. So sorry. Um, I'll, I can try to get back to you <laughs> on that. Sounds good. Um, and I know they may also be able to um, drill in. I guess, would that be uh, RPSDK or RASDK uh, more specifically? Or GCS? RPSDK would be the, the GCS settings that were added. Um, okay. So maybe able to uh, come here and, and browse this change log to uh, see any relevant um, GCS settings. Yeah. OK, so I guess we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so yeah, one of the things we're definitely trying to push more um, internally with uh, the Blue Planet Professional Services team is uh, improving our unit testing and testing practices as a whole. So one of those things, of course, is unit testing the resource adapters. Um, what this means in terms of RAs is actually testing the uh, commands that you issue south down and then those pipelines uh, to transform the response into uh, a JSON response, which gets uh, upserted to uh, the Blue Planet MDSO. Um, so for the example here, we'll use the uh, kind of typical RA Docker um, that's part of the CLI uh, or creating a CLI tutorial. So um, if anybody's not aware, you can find that under this MDSO Learn resource adapters. Um, and then we have this creating a CLI based resource adapter. Um, I'll also note this should be updated very soon um, with some useful improvements for the, the latest release of DTK DIS. Um, so kind of assuming that you've already created your uh, RA Docker um, RA, um, <laughs> you can move forward and uh, 
pick up where we're here, where we're starting here um, to create unit tests. So one of the ones we'll check out in particularly is the git container command. Um, so over here, I've already have the uh, RA Docker um, started or downloaded and uh, installed. This is running on a DevOps toolkit. Um, and I don't think we'll actually need it at all, but over here I have gone ahead and started the uh, BPO core dev and script plan and the orchestrate UI as well. Um, mostly just so that we'll have some containers running for the RA uh, commands to pick up on. Um, so here I'm in the RA Docker project um, and I have uh, sourced the environment, um, the Python environment here. Uh, so that'll allow me not to, you know, need to prefix every command with the env bin, you know, command. I can just run pp uh, prov cli directly, for example. Um, and then additionally, uh, you know, we've set up uh, an endpoints.json here to point to our local host, which we'll use for um, kind of testing the current containers. So if we open up um, the git container, uh, command, um, right under model commands, git container. Um, you can see we're ultimately going to do a Docker inspect on a data ID, um, take that response and load it as JSON, and then ultimately pass it through this git container template. Um, here, which will uh, form our JSON response. So if I wanted to, um, kind of manually test out that command or, or run it off uh, as a one-off. I can use the bpoprov CLI. Um, I believe it's command run. And then you uh, specify the location of the model folder. So this will be RA Docker model. Um, the endpoint for our uh, specific command that we're going to run here. So git command container is a CLI endpoint. Um, and then we'll pass in any data that we need to, um, which in this case would be uh, an ID here. And then dash dash start to actually run this. Um, so of course, you know, for this command, I'm, I'm going to need to pass in an ID and I don't know what those are yet. So um, we'll just kind of copy that um, for now. And so I could uh, you know, take a look with Docker PS here. Um, I can see the different containers running. Uh, I also started this BusyBox container, which is just pinging Google. Um, so that's the container ID I'll use. Um, and then, of course, we list this here as well. Um, and then if you were curious, you know, ultimately we're going to go down and, and pass the command docker inspect against this. So um, so it'd be something like docker inspect and then our container ID, which will form this response and we're going to pull out with our container. Um, so then again, we wanted to test that with bpprov directly. Ah, the specific command. All right, so we're running this um, against the commands. Git container, this on command. Um, so that looks like that's working successfully here. So now if I wanted to actually create a unit test for this, um, we can kind of take a look uh, at where this is in the DTK disk docs. Um, it's under plan or bpprov. Um, so we'll go to the latest release of bpprov here. 
uh, and we can actually check out this bbprof testing section. Um, and essentially you'll just create this uh, JSON file that will kind of define your test. So the endpoint that it's gonna use, um, the parameters that we're passing out. So that would be the equivalent to my ID here. Um, and then what we would expect from the uh, CLI. So that would be the Docker inspect command um, that is ultimately gonna be generated. And then our in parameters, so this would be our response back from the docker inspect command. Um, and this is a, an array of arrays. Um, well, you specify for your endpoint and then it's an array of arrays. Uh, one for each CLI command and then that nested array will be one um, item for each line in the response. So in this case, you know, it's gonna be quite a huge uh, response. And then of course, what we expect um, to come back in after it's been uh, parsed by our translators on our end path. So that would be loading it to JSON and then passing it through this container template. So for this example, um, I've already kind of created this file to, to speed things up. Um, of course, you know, the hard part here is, is wrapping everything in quotes uh, line by line. Um, everything else is fairly straightforward. So uh, we're gonna spat specify this ID parameter um, that will pass in, um, which will then result in this Docker inspect command, uh, which will generate this response. Uh, and finally, um, create our um, JSON uh, template here that would actually be the response sent to Blue Planet. So I'll just copy this whole thing. And I'm actually gonna make this under this commands test directory. Um, it technically could be anywhere because uh, we will link it to our command as the next step, but um, kind of convention is to put it under the commands test directory. So, and I will just name it the um, same thing here. So git container.json, um, and we're gonna paste that in. So now we have uh, essentially written our test. Um, now the next step, like I said, mentioned, would it be to actually link it to our git command um, or git container command here. Um, so that's just an additional attribute called tests, um, which is an array of, uh, files that contain your uh, test data. So in this case, that's gonna be under um, the commands, test, git container.json. Um, so with that written now, um, we can actually test out that command. So using the bpprof CLI again. So it's bpprof CLI, um, and then we want to run a test, um, specify our model directory, and then we're gonna specify the uh, specific command that we wanna test here. So did the test, hey, successful. Um, so we know everything uh, worked well there. Um, so why would you wanna create um, test kind of manually this direction? This way, especially when the response is so huge, um, I guess this would be, you know, if you really wanted to practice what we call test-driven development, where you're writing your tests before you even wrote your command, so you know which data you're gonna need to pass down southbound, and then you know the um, resource type uh, definition that you created uh, that defines kind of your JSON model that will go back to MDSO. Uh, so if you know that information ahead of time, you could write the test and then start your development um, and work towards a passing test, uh, which would indicate that your um, command is now working successfully. Uh, alternatively, um, if you kind of go the route we did here, um, maybe you're you know creating the command for the first time brand new, um, after you get it working, you know it's in a stable point, and so you wanna create a test to kind of save that point. So as future iterations go, you'll be notified to any breaking changes. You can actually use some commands um, some tools with bpprofcli to record your command and then 
um, actually turn that into an automatically generated test, uh, which is can be a lot simpler, um, specifically when um, you have to create a huge response um, and convert that all to you know a line by line JSON response. So for that example, we'll actually do um, the show containers. So this is just going to be equivalent of a, a list function um, on a single git container. You can see ultimately the command that we're going to run is going to be this docker um, ps, which will pipe into docker inspect um, for all of our uh, containers. So you can see if I were to run that, um, you know, this would be a huge response and uh, a serious pain to, you know, then convert into a uh, A JSON test, you know, breaking everything out line by line, having to escape the quotes um, and all of that. So what we can do is we can actually uh, run our command as a one-off command and we can add this option to record the response. Um, so we'll do that now. So again, it's just adding this extra record option and then specifying the file where we want to save that recording to. So we just did it there. Um, you can see, you know, because uh, previous testing, we're generating our uh, responses correctly. And now this will have created a uh, show containers recording. Uh, this recording is ultimately a, a JSON file as well that contains um, really everything that happened um, behind the scenes as part of the, the response. Um, southbound and then uh, of course getting that response back uh, northbound and running through all the transformations. Um, so then with the use of the BP prov, I can turn this recording into a test um, with this record convert command. So we're saying record convert, um, you can convert it to several different things. Um, in this case, we want to convert it to a test. Um, you know, this can also be used to create uh, a simulator for your resource adapter. Um, so that can be useful for testing when you don't actually have the physical device outbound. Um, you can use this recordings to similarly create uh, simulators. So I ran that there. Um, and so it basically took my recording and popped out an auto generated test. So you can see here um, contains kind of all the same information from when we did it manually, um, specifying our endpoints, out parameters, uh, what to expect back from the um, out parameters after, or out after any parameters have been injected. Um, and then of course, our in response. Um, and it handles all that automatically for us, so that makes things very easy. Um, so really the only step I need to do now is take this show containers JSON um, and move it to the directory that I want it to belong in. Um, so I'll just come up to this test directory and move it there. And then of course I'll, I'll link it to the show containers command here. So that's just adding a tests block, uh, which contains uh, an array of each of the test files we'd want to run against this. So um, this will be this is uh, from the root of the model folder. So uh, we're going to go into commands, test, show containers.json. Save that. Um, and then, of course, we'll actually run that test uh, and make sure that it, it is working as expected. So cool, that ran and that passed. Um, so, so far what we've been showing too is, you know, just running command or tests one at a time. Um, often, you know, you'll want to run uh, all of the tests at once um, and, you know, also maybe check your coverage. So we can just run BPL, uh, BPProv CLI test, pass in the model directory. That would run all the tests. If we want to include uh, our code coverage, we can uh, include a dash dash coverage here. So running this 
Um, so you can see it, it went and it tested the two tests that we'd written. Um, and then it's also notifying us that, hey, we're missing coverage on all these other commands. Um, and so, uh, and ultimately our coverage, test coverage right now is 15%. Uh, so uh, four out of these 26 possible commands. Um, and then it's also, you know, kind of showing each step of the, the command there, the transformations. Um, and then finally, you know, then you can actually start pulling this into your CI/CD with GitLab. Um, so we have an example here with the Juniper CSO RA. Uh, so if we take a look at this, um, we can see that we have the code coverage uh, is being reported. This is relatively, uh, I think, newer RA. Um, so they're working on getting this code coverage up right now. Um, and then if we wanted to take a look at a specific pipeline, for example, um, check out this last pipeline against master. Um, so it ran through the full pipeline of linting, uh, and then of course the unit tests, and here we can drill in and actually see the results of this unit test as well. So if I scroll up a bit, we can see all the commands that we currently have tests for, uh, which are passing, and then everything that is missing coverage, um, and of course get the coverage reported here, uh, and then that's also parsed by regex and, and picked up by GitLab. So that's kind of our quick demo on, you know, unit testing RAs. Uh, does anybody have any questions um, with regards to the unit testing or, or really any questions um, for this 2002 release? Hi, Janet. Okay, just a question. So in your example, everything passed. So what do you see when it, the test fails? Do you, do you get like detail logs or? Yeah, so let's see if we um, can break one of these. Um, Real quick. So, uh, for example, here, you know, maybe we're changing the command that's being executed southbound and we forgot RT. Um, now, if we run the same um, test, we'll see uh, that this test failed um, and then it gives us in, uh, a diff. So, it was ex what it was expecting and what it actually received. Okay. So you get it right, right there in the, in the, the, you don't have to go look at a log. It, it will be right there on the screen. Exactly. That's, okay. Yep. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I have one more question. So is all, is this functionality been there to do the recording and auto generate the test or is that new? Uh, that functionality has been there for, um, Quite a while now. I think it's it's just something that hasn't been used or leveraged as much as we probably should be using it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thanks. Um, and then I will say with the recording to um, come back up here. Um, so yeah, that's covered in the BPProv documentation. They have a recording and playback simulator, um, and so this. Uh, really goes hand in hand with both the BP prof testing and the device simulation um, components. So you can use these recordings to easily simulate uh, a device or build a simulator for a device that you could then spin up as its like own Docker container as uh, you develop. That's all on the BP prof directory, but you started from the learning, the learning uh, header. Yeah. yeah. So um, to because get to this. The so, that's where I, yeah, I get a little lost. Yeah, so right now this is just a demo <laughs> as part of our Ask the Expert. Uh, oh, okay. So maybe Got we it. can look to clean it up, I, I assume, and, and pull it into the CLIRA. Um, so this is kind of our lightweight training for creating um, a resource adapter. Um, so it's just a CLI base and it uses uh, the Docker daemon um, as your kind of domain endpoint, um, since that will be included already with all the DevOps toolkits and you know, nobody needs to you know, require some uh, separate device to write their RA against. Apparently I've never gone to the learn tab. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and this, I will say this is, um, we have an updated version of this that is currently under review. Um, and it kind of talks about uh, some of the, the latest topics such as or some of the things aren't that even that new, but um, 
best practices such as using asynchronous polling for your, for your resource adapters um, and some of the new changes. Um, I think particularly right now um, worth mentioning for testing the RA here, we just say start the RA straight up and then you can start hitting the endpoints. Um, this is no longer true because of, I think a change in 1910 possibly. Um, RAs now wait to start their REST API endpoint until they can find BPO core. Um, so this is, you know, to prevent uh, other microservices starting to use uh, the RA before BPO core is even ready. Um, mm -hmm. And there's a flag that you can pass in here to run this without BPO core. Um, I'm not sure off the top of my head. I don't know if uh, Shimming or Ryan, you know that flag is, but that's just one of the many changes that'll be coming hopefully in the next day or two. Yeah, the, the flag that you were just talking about, uh, dash hash RPSDK no require BPO core. Okay. Barely. Yeah. So yeah, that's this case no required bpo core so the last one in the list dash dash ah. yeah yeah I mean, it says if you're not run not planning on running the RA against um bpo core anyways you can also just Disable RPSDK with that disable plugin option as well. Okay. Uh, yeah, either one would 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 do it. So yeah, just so there's a, an example here um, in the recording, anyways, and we can update the Q and A uh, section after um, this event so that everybody's questions are are included um, and are asked the expert. All right, I will have one more question. Yeah. Okay, um, I saw that you had something under learn about service templates. I had a customer ask me if there was any uh, tooling or support in testing their service templates, because that seems to be, you know, they need a whole MDSO usually to test service templates. And so they wanted to know if we had any um, additional support for that. So I know that's something the professional services teams are looking into right now. I believe they're currently um, looking at using PyTest and mm -hmm. um, testing similarly to how plan SDK tests are written themselves. Um, so as we figure that out, we'll be sure to include um, updated documentation here. Um, otherwise, I think, yeah, the, the next step is that integration testing using um, the Newman runner and postman to, to write the tests, um, okay. which is less than ideal. All right, if um, there's no more questions um, from anybody, uh, thank you guys for attending. If you do have uh, any questions that come up after this, feel free to reach out on the um, My Sienna or Blue Planet communities. Um, so again, that's under you know, mysienna.com. And then you would go to QA Blue Planet. And then here, you know, feel free to post any questions. Um, I get alerts uh, when anybody posts something new um, and, and try to uh, monitor these as well as uh, other people across our team um, try to watch these posts. All right, great. Thanks, everybody. Um, hope you guys have a, a good rest of the week uh, and stay safe.